Jonathan Swift Jonathan Swift, known as Dean Swift due to his role as a Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Dublin, was a versatile Anglo-Irish satirist, essayist, poet, political pamphleteer and Anglican cleric. His works include A Tale of a Tub, An Argument Against Abolishing Christianity, Gulliver's Travels and A Modest Proposal, solidifying his status as a leading prose satirist in English literature. Swift used pseudonyms like Lemuel Gulliver and M.B. Drapier for anonymity. Born to Englishman Jonathan Swift and Abigail Eric, he grew up dependent on his uncle's support after his father's early death. Swift's education commenced at Kilkenny School and continued at Trinity College, Dublin. Turbulent times due to Catholic disturbances led him to England, where he served diplomat Sir William Temple and pursued higher education at Oxford and Dublin. Swift's poetry, influenced by various writers, exhibits apparent simplicity, emphasizing logic over ornate language. He frequently employed spareness, straightforwardness and the rejection of poetic conventions, directing readers' attention to his arguments rather than poetic techniques. His poems provoked reflection after reading, demonstrating power and subtlety of thought. Swift's literary journey was shaped by family ties and education. Raised by his uncle in Dublin due to his father's death and his mother's return to England, Swift's family had intriguing literary connections. His grandmother, Elizabeth Dryden Swift, was related to poet John Dryden's family. He had familiar links to figures like Sir Walter Raleigh and Francis Godwin, whose works influenced him. Swift's education took him to Trinity College, Dublin, where he earned a BA and developed a friendship with writer William Congreve. He furthered his studies, obtaining an MA from Hart Hall, Oxford, in 1692. Later, he earned a Doctor in Divinity degree from Trinity College, Dublin, in 1702. In the Augustan age, Swift's poetic contribution stood out, characterized by apparent simplicity and directness. His poetry, though spare, conveyed power and subtlety of thought. Swift's poems often eschewed complex allusion and ornate language, aiming to engage readers with logical arguments and straightforward narratives. While influenced by writers like John Wilmot and Samuel Butler, Swift's debt to his contemporaries remained minimal. His verses read swiftly, emphasizing argumentative clarity over intricate patterns. Swift consciously avoided poetic conventions and professed disdain for poetic affectation, portraying himself as a straightforward individual. Swift's poems created a different kind of density, engaging readers in contemplation after reading. His work's power compensated for its perceived lack of technical density, making him a major figure in both poetry and prose. In 1742, Swift suffered a stroke, leaving him unable to speak, and he passed away three years later. His final resting place is at St. Patrick's Cathedral, Dublin. Some of his notable works include A Modest Proposal, A Tale of a Tub, Argument Against Abolishing Christianity, Drapier's Letters, Gulliver's Travels, Journal to Stella, Conduct of the Allies, and Verses on the Death of Dr. Swift. Drapier's Letters and a Modest Proposal Drapier's Letters is a series of seven pamphlets penned by Jonathan Swift between 1724 and 1725. Swift, writing under the pseudonym M.B. Drapier, used these letters to rally Irish public opinion against a privately minted inferior copper coinage imposed by William Wood through letters patent. Swift depicted Ireland as financially independent and constitutionally distinct from Britain. His writings led to a nationwide boycott forcing the withdrawal of Wood's patent, earning Swift recognition as a hero in Ireland. Swift's persona, the Drapier, is seen as instrumental in creating a more cohesive Irish community. A Modest Proposal, written by Jonathan Swift in 1729, is a satirical essay suggesting that impoverished Irish could alleviate their economic woes by selling their children as food to the wealthy. This hyperbolic proposal mocks heartless attitudes towards the poor and British policies in Ireland. Presented as an economic treatise, it condemns England's exploitation of Ireland. Swift's essay masterfully employs irony, transitioning from describing Irish poverty to proposing a shocking solution. Its title has become synonymous with proposing outrageous cures for problems. Swift's essay is celebrated for its sustained irony. It begins by highlighting the plight of Irish beggars, lulling readers into a sense of sympathy. However, the shock comes when Swift suggests using well-nursed infants as food, offering cooking methods and financial calculations. 
he employs various rhetorical devices including references to authorities like a very knowing american and the fictitious salmanazar a native of the island formosa to emphasize his argument's absurdity the battle of the books The Battle of the Books is a satirical work by Jonathan Swift published in 1704 as part of the prolegomena to his larger work A Tale of a Tub. In this satirical piece Swift depicts a literal battle between books in the king's library symbolizing a larger philosophical and literary debate of the time known as the quarrel of the ancients and the moderns. The quarrel of the ancients and the moderns was a debate that emerged in France at the end of the 17th century. The moderns represented by figures like Bernard Lee Bouvier de Fontenelle argued that contemporary learning and knowledge had surpassed the wisdom of the ancient Greeks and Romans. They believed that the modern age of science and reason had a superior understanding of the world. On the other side, the ancients contended that all essential knowledge could be found in the works of ancient authors like Virgil, Cicero, Homer, and Aristotle. Swift's satire, The Battle of the Books, echoes this debate he employs the metaphor of a battle between books in the king's library to symbolize the clash of ideas and authors with each side striving for supremacy the work humorously explores the conflict between traditional wisdom and contemporary knowledge so william temple a retired minister and diplomat originally introduced the metaphors of a dwarf standing on the shoulders of giants and the idea of moderns reflecting or refining the wisdom of the ancients Temple's essay on this topic sparked a short-lived but intense debate in England. Notably, Jonathan Swift, who served as Temple's secretary, did not actively participate in this debate, but it undoubtedly influenced his thinking and served as an inspiration for the Battle of the Books. Overall, Swift's work is a satirical take on the quarrel of the ancients and the moderns, using humor and wit to comment on the ongoing literary and philosophical disputes of his time. A Tale of a Tub A Tale of a Tub is a prose satire written by Jonathan Swift between 1696 and 1699. It was published anonymously in 1704 and later expanded in 1710. This work is considered one of Swift's first major literary achievements and comprises three interconnected parts: the tale itself, the battle of the books, and a discourse concerning the mechanical operation of the spirit. The tale This central section of the work is an allegorical narrative that satirizes religious and literary excesses. It tells the story of three brothers, Peter, Martin, and Jack, who represent different branches of Christianity, such as Catholicism, Anglicanism, and dissent. The tale humorously explores their interpretations and misinterpretations of their father's will, symbolizing the division and conflicts within Christianity. The Battle of the Books This part engages in a scholarly debate about the relative merits of ancient and modern literature and culture. It draws parallels between this literary dispute and the broader philosophical debates of Swift's time. A discourse concerning the mechanical operation of the spirit. This section satirizes religious fanaticism and enthusiasm. It humorously depicts the absurdity of religious practices and beliefs that rely on mystical and irrational interpretations of scripture. In the preface to A Tale of a Tub Swift explains the title's metaphor, comparing the work to a tub thrown overboard by sailors to distract a whale and prevent it from attacking their ship. In this context, Swift suggests that his satire may serve as a distraction to deflect criticism away from the state-established religion. Swift's work is characterized by its imaginative wit, mastery of stylistic effects, and extensive use of parody. It is a scathing critique of religious zealotry, excessive pride, and gullibility. At the time of its publication, politics and religion were closely intertwined in England, and the work satirizes both religious and political aspects, making it a controversial and misunderstood piece. Despite its notoriety, A Tale of a Tub is considered one of Swift's finest allegorical works. Gulliver's Travels Gulliver's Travels, written by Jonathan Swift and published in 1726, is a classic of English literature and a masterpiece of satirical fiction. The novel is divided into four parts, each describing a different adventure of Lemuel Gulliver, a surgeon and a sea captain. Here is a summary of each part and the themes explored in the novel. Part 1: Lilliput. In the first part, Gulliver finds himself in Lilliput, a land inhabited by people who are less than 6 inches tall. 
He is captured by the Lilliputians and becomes embroiled in their political and religious conflicts, including a war with the neighboring island of Blefuscu over the correct way to crack an egg. This part satirizes human pettiness, vanity and absurdity using the tiny Lilliputians as a symbol of these traits. Part 2 Brobdingnag Gulliver's second voyage takes him to Brobdingnag, a land inhabited by giants. He is initially exhibited as a curiosity but later becomes a favorite at the Brobdingnagian court. This part satirizes the human condition from the opposite perspective, highlighting the flaws and weaknesses of humanity when viewed through the eyes of giants. It also critiques the arrogance of European colonialism. Part 3 Laputa, Balnibarbi, Lagnag, Glub Drub Drip, and Japan. Gulliver's third voyage leads him to Laputa, a flying island inhabited by impractical intellectuals who are disconnected from the real world. He then visits Balnibarbi where he witnesses the absurdity of scientific experiments and projects that lack practical value. In Lagnag, he encounters the Stralbergs, immortal beings who suffer the misery of eternal aging. Finally, in Glub Dub Drip, he speaks with historical figures and learns about the lies and deceptions of history. This part of the novel satirizes the folly of human knowledge and the misuse of science. Part 4 Humanims and Yahoos In the fourth part, Gulliver arrives in the land of Humanims, a race of rational and virtuous horses. He also encounters the Yahoos, a degenerate and bestial humanoid species. Gulliver's interactions with the Humanims lead him to question the nature of humanity and civilization. The novel culminates in Gulliver's deep disgust for his own kind and he becomes a misanthrope. Themes of the novel Satire Gulliver's Travels is a satirical work that ridicules various aspects of human nature, society, politics and science. Swift uses humour and exaggeration to criticise the follies and vices of his contemporary world. Human Nature The novel explores the flaws and absurdities of human nature, portraying humans as petty, irrational and corrupt. Gulliver's encounters with different societies serves as a lens through which these flaws are magnified and critiqued. Colonialism Swift critiques European colonialism and imperialistic attitudes through Gulliver's adventures in foreign lands. The novel highlights the arrogance of colonizers and the dehumanization of indigenous people. Science and Knowledge Part 3 of the novel satirizes the misuse of science and knowledge for impractical or harmful purposes. Swift questions the value of scientific pursuits that lack real-world applications. Misanthropy Gulliver's growing misanthropy, especially in Part 4, reflects Swift's disillusionment with humanity. The novel challenges readers to consider the darker aspects of human behaviour and society. Religion Throughout the novel, religion is satirised, particularly in the conflicts between religious sects in Lilliput and the irrational beliefs of various societies Gulliver's encounters. Gulliver's Travels is a complex and multifaceted work that continues to be celebrated for its wit, insight and enduring relevance as a satirical masterpiece. It invites readers to reflect on the human condition and the follies of the world in which we live.